Greetings my fellow Reviteers. Today we're going to talk about one of the five essential things that you have to sort of kind of master and learn in Revit. Today we're going to talk about walls and how we can set them up for our ongoing projects, continuing projects, maybe new projects, whatever that circumstance may be. But we're going to show you how to start making up your own wall types from the out of the box options that you get in Revit and then we're going to take things forward from there. So grab yourself that cup of coffee but it's always essential, we've got to do that. So join us on this journey and we'll start with learning how to make walls. Okay, so here we are into Revit. I've just opened it up under the architectural template that they provide. Now, we're only setting up walls today, so that's all that we need it to do. So what we're going to do to here is I'm going to change that first and foremost from 1 to 100 to 1 to 50, because I like working on that scale. And I'm going to change that from the wireframe to shaded. It just makes a little bit more sense, makes it easier to understand, and you'll see in a second or so when we start drawing walls. So to get to walls, under the, along the main ribbon tab, you have walls, which is the very first one, or the keyboard shortcut is WA. You'll see the, the shortcuts appear when you just hover over there, but if you click wall, and then Revit comes with all these wall types already preloaded, which is fine, that's, that's what it is. But these don't make a huge amount of sense unless you want to. So we're going to click on the one that they've done as a basic. We're going to edit that type, and then we're going to duplicate it and we're going to call it 2.1 because it's a, uh, we're going to call it actually 1.1 and we're going to call it timber frame uh, if I could spell it correctly and we'll call it facing brick okay because it's a timber frame and it's going to have a brick facing brick external and we're going to go okay with that I'm now going to check, we'll, we'll come to the structure in a second. We're going to leave the function as an external wall. I'm going to change the graphics color from that gray color to black. There we go. And OK. And the only thing I'm going to do in this box here is I'm going to change the type mark to match up here. I'm going to call it 1.1. Now that we've done that, that's fine. So we're now going to edit the box. So we're going to edit. And this is the structure of your timber frame of your external wall timber frame. So we have common brick, we're fine with that. We're going to change the thermal air layer. It's not fiberglass part. So if you click on that, come up with three little dots. And under the search, we're going to just type in air because that's what would be the cavity. And we click on that and then OK that. I'm going to change that to 50 millimeters. One of the things I'm going to do here, structure, it's not concrete masonry blocks. We're going to change that. Click on that, same as what we just did. And we're going to type in timber. Generally, Revit has timbers or whatever it is, most materials in here that you're going to look for. And you always take it in such a way that you take it and then you can separate it. And if it doesn't appear up here, it does actually appear under this library here. So if you have your timber walls, there's timber C24s, we can do that. Click that and that just adds it. But let's just rename that. So right click on that and we want to rename it to timber frame and we're calling it external. Just simplifies the whole thing. So there we go, that's it there. And under here, we have the, what is the appearance of it. So the main shading of it, which is the color in the background, um, we're going to cl click on that, and we want it to be maybe a kind of timber-esque type color. Uh, somewhere around there. Okay, so we're happy with that. And the only other thing we're going to change here is the cut pattern in the foreground. We want to change that, and we want to give it a hatch pattern of... Uh, you can mess about with this as much as you like to what you want it to be, but I like the crosshatch pattern 3. There we go. Okay, and we'll okay that. And I'm going to dull that down just a little bit to be in there. Uh, maybe a little bit more. There we go. And we're going to go, I'm going to apply that and okay that. So we've now created a new material and we're now going to change the thickness up to 145, which is fine. Now I know that on the outside of that goes oriented strandboard OSB. So we're now going to do is an insert on that. It's not part of the structure, so I'm going to move it up one so it's out with the structure. And I'm going to change that to, a, you have options here. And I'm going to name it as a substrate. By category it isn't selected yet, so we're going to click on that. And then I'm going to look for strandboard. Now it doesn't appear here, but it is here. So again, click there, and we can click on the arrow, bring it up. There we go. That's it. I'm going to change the cut pattern from none to solid fill, and then I'm going to change that color so it's a little bit brighter than that, and a little bit better looking, maybe a kind of yellow color. 
Uh, again, we'll just dull that down just a little bit. There we go. So we're going to apply that and OK that. But I have to give it a thickness. It is now 9.5 millimeters thick. And the last, or getting to the last parts of it, we're now going to put, we've got our finished board here. But I have on our requirements here is we have a insulated rigid board over the top of that. So if I click on that and then I do insert, I'm going to change that to finish from that to thermal. I'm going to change it. I'm going to create a new one and I'm going to call it rigid. There you go, rigid insulation. I'm quite happy with that. I am going to change, the only thing I'm going to change here is a crosshatch pattern at three to one and a half. I'm going to change that to being just a little bit duller and we're okay. And then the background color is we're going to leave it as solid, but I want it to be maybe, let's just say, maybe close to one of the manufacturer's colors. Uh, we all know which one we're talking about. Okay, and we can apply that and okay and it's going to be 50 millimeters thick. The last thing I'm going to do is it's not a plaster fin, it's a gypsum board. Now I could leave it as that and it would work okay, but it's wrong. So we can change that. And if we type in here is gyp board, it comes up, gypsum wall board, and then it's already got everything. And I'm quite happy with the way that is. Okay that, and then I'm going to change that to 15 millimeters. And then we're going to go okay, apply, okay, and then we can draw our wall from there to there. And there we have it. There is our wall type. Looking pretty nice, looking very good. Gives a little bit of life. That's why we draw it with the shaded, because then we can see the colors, makes it a little bit easier to see. So now we've created that first wall type. What we're now going to do is if you click on it, you get a different palette that comes under Modify Walls. We're going to copy that wall from there and just offset it a little bit. There we go. And then Escape, Escape. Now what we're now going to do is create one with our rendered finish, block work and rendered as opposed to face and brick. So we're going to go edit type, we're going to duplicate that and we're going to change that from 1.1 to 1.2 and we're going to change that from face and brick to a render. Okay, and we okay that. I can leave all that. The only other thing which is really important to change is this one. So I change that to 1.2. I'll show you at the end why we're doing this. Lastly, so that's all happy. We can now go to the structure to edit. We don't have common brick. We have block. So we change that and we can do block. You can scroll through these if you want, but this just makes it a lot easier to do. So concrete blocks. There we go. So we're okay with that. I'm okay with that pattern. Maybe change that down just a little bit. Again, just personal choice. You don't have to, but it just makes it a little bit easier to read. Too many black lines. Not a great idea. And then we're going to, the blocks are only 100 millimeter thick. So last to do on this is we're now going to insert that and we're going to change that to finish two because it's the second finish on it. We're going to change that to a rendered. So we're going here and type in. Now I'm going to show you. So you could scroll through all these and look for render, right? But it's just easier to find if you just type in render. And there we go, render smooth page. We're happy with that. It's got all the things, got all the bits and pieces. We're really happy with that. And we are going to OK that. And the last thing we need to do is give it a thickness, which is 18 millimeters. And then we can go OK, apply, OK, and there we go. So there we go. There we go. We've got a timber frame facing brick, timber frame block work. And it looks pretty good. Yeah, OK. So last but no means least, what we're going to do for the external walls is we're going to create a sub wall. Okay, so if we take that and we do the same as what we take this one and do the same as what we did before, we we'll copy it from there to, and I'll just stick it over here. There we go, that's it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit type, I'm going to duplicate it, and I'm going to call it 01, and I'm going to call it face and brick. Underworld. Okay. And then we go. And then again, as before, we go in here and we change that to 0 0.1. I've called it 0 because it's below the ground, and then 1 would be superstructure. Just a simple things that I do. Now we do under structure, edit. We're going to keep the common brick. We're going to keep the air gap, but I know it's going to be 59 millimeters, 59 millimeters thick. I don't have an OSB, so you can delete that. The structure is no longer timber frame. It is going back to block work. So we type up here and go block. And there's our masonry concrete blocks. 
they will be 140 millimeters thick. We don't have insulation below the ground, so we can delete that. And we don't have wallboard below the ground, so there we go. And we can OK that, and we'll split that, and we can apply it, and OK. So now we have a sub wall and two superstructure walls. So there you go, that's our first three external walls done. Next thing we're going to do is create two internal walls, a load bearing and a non-load bearing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take pick one of my timber frame walls. I'm then going to copy that from there to there. I'm going to move it down just a little touch. And then I'm going to go edit type. And I'm going to call it duplicate it. I'm going to call it 2.1 because it's an internal one. And then we've got timber. And we'll call it load bearing. There we go. I'm going to capitalize the L just because it looks a little bit better. And we can OK that. First things first, you will see, I'm going to change up here from function, because it is no longer an external wall. We can change that, and then this little drop down, we can change that to an interior wall. And then I'm going to leave the solid fill it black, because that's okay, but I'm going to do it as I've done before with a type mark. I'm going to change that to 2.1, and then we're going to apply. But then we're going to go back up here to structure. Um, we have the wall board, which we're going to keep. We have rigid insulation, which we don't need, so we can delete that. We don't need OSB, we can delete that. We don't need air, we can delete that. We don't need masonry concrete blocks, we can delete that. What you can do, rather than clicking and going through that whole process, if you click on that and it goes blue, Control C, up there, to backspace, and Control V, and then it pastes it back in your name. So just a wee quick shortcut for it. And then we change that to 15 mil. We know that that wall is now going to be 95 millimeters thick because that's the timber, uh, general terms. And we're going to change that. And we're going to take that one and we're going to duplicate the material and assets. And we're going to call it and change that imaginatively to internal. OK, and there we have it there. Internal load bearing. OK. And I'm going to change the appearance. I'm going to keep the appearance and the color the same so it looks because that is part of the kit. Okay. And we apply and OK. And there we have it. That's our structure. And we can OK it. And we can apply it. And we can OK it. So there we go. That is our timber frame. So that load bearing wall goes up at the same time as these non load bearing walls. Uh, sorry, external walls. Lastly, we take this one. And then again, go do as we did before copy it. OK. And then I'm going to do is I'm going to edit type. I'm going to duplicate it, as we do with everything in this thing. Delete 2.2 timber frame, and I'm going to change that to load bearing to non-load bearing. So we know it's just a partition. And then I'm going to change that type to 2.2. And the reason we copy as well is because, look, it brought over the things of the function, the fills, and all that sort of stuff. We're going to change that, and we leave that as 15, leave that as 15, and then the timber frame itself from load bearing, we're going to change that. We take that, we're going to duplicate it, and we're going to change that from load bearing to non load bearing. Get rid of that one. And I'm going to change the color just so I can visually see that it's different from the other one. And maybe we'll just make it a little bit, bit paler, and maybe we'll remove the cross hatch just so that it's not there. None. Okay. 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 And I apply, and okay, and I'm okay. And I apply and OK, and there we go. And that helps. So there we have three external walls, two internal walls. Now, you will note that when we did this, we did, if you go to edit type, we did this type mark 1.1. OK, this is where it comes in. So if you then, once you're drawing your architectural drawings, you've got your working drawings, and you want to tell people what these walls are, under annotate, you can do tag by category. And if you hover over it, it clicks. Because Revit is clever, it knows what these that is now relating to the mark. Uh, you can move them over and you click and you grab those little grab handles. Oh, and then you can do that. And we'll get any wall tags and all that sort of stuff later on. But there you go. There is your first five wall types you've made three external, two internal, and then you can continue, use those as your basis, copy and rename them, build them up from there, and build this up as your library. Okay, important thing to do once you've done this, save it so you know where it is, and then you don't have to reinvent the wheel again. Okay, thanks very much. Hope you enjoyed this. Please like and subscribe, and please watch the next couple of videos where we will now be talking about walls, 
roofs, windows and doors. Okay, thank you very much. Hope you enjoy.